how do you begin to build beautiful websites on Squarespace? I recently was asked this question sitting down with a friend and they said, do you have a set of design principles you would recommend to someone on how to create beautiful websites on Squarespace? So in today's video, I'm going to walk through a few tools I use plus tips I have on creating beautiful layouts and websites. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Glad to have you. If you've been here before, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I would love to get feedback from you that you're finding value in this content. If you hit that like button, it tells the YouTube algorithm some stuff, but it also tells me that you're getting value from this video. So the first thing I'm gonna recommend to you is DesignFlow. DesignFlow is a place where you can go to get Squarespace inspiration on sites built on the platform. So you can go through here, see new websites that are built every single single day we release five new yes this is my project we release five new sites on the site and so you can see a lot of different ways that people utilize Squarespace to create beautiful beautiful layouts and so inspiration is always the first place to start from there here are a few other things I'm gonna point you to another resource this is Christy Price this is her website she does amazing work amazing work one of my favorite Squarespace designers you could go to her site here and the URL will be on the screen you could get a pre-launch checklist. This will help ensure that you cover all your bases for your site from top to bottom, everything you need for your site. Now, let's talk about plugins. Plugins are gonna be a major one. Before we actually look at a website, let's start talking about plugins to make your website build process easier. First and foremost is Font Ninja. Highly recommend Font Ninja because it allows you to pull out and pick what fonts are on a website. So in this case, when you click on Font Ninja, it loads this little screen on the side and it tells you what fonts are on the page. So we have IBM Plex Mono, we have Write Grotesque, and we have Write Grotesque Compact. Boom, those are the fonts that are on the screen. So it helps you identify what you're seeing on the screen. It helps you identify the colors, the size of the font, the spacing in the font, with just hovering over the different sections. Really great plugin. The next one is gonna be Squarespace Collection Block Identifier. Now, if you've never touched code before, this is gonna be a little bit intimidating, but over time you're gonna learn it and understand it and it will be such a gift because it makes the process so easy. So here you'll see that I'm on the back end of the Spacebar website. All I have to do, there's a plugin, the plugin's up in here somewhere in this little piece right here, but all I have to do is click Command E and you'll see all these weird codes show up. But these codes are unique identifiers for every single block on the page. So say I just want to customize this block here. Well, I click on this, it copies it for me. And then from there, I could go to custom CSS and design it or play with it, adjust it how I like. Click Command E again, and it goes away. So that would be the next plugin I recommend, the Squarespace collection slash block identifier. Those are both free as well. The first two are free. This one is a paid plugin. So Squarespace Tools Extension Pro. I highly recommend this once you start getting into building sites, mainly because it offers you some really useful shortcuts and tools. So right now you're looking at the back end of a website. It's very out of the box Squarespace. If I turn on the extension, you'll see a few things change. There's a few parts of the extension, but if I hit enable UI tweaks, first thing it's gonna do is you'll see this shows up here. So it makes it really easy for me to go from pages to custom CSS, back to pages, to site styles, any of that. And if I refresh, there's a little phone here. There will be a phone and let's see, there it is, the tablet view and tablet landscape view. So this helps you in the process of just designing your website and making it beautiful across all types of devices, making it really easy to see your site in different viewports. The plugin also offers a lot of other benefits that I'm not gonna get into it. It could, it could have its own video, but if you check out this page, you could see it. Here's the actual plugin up here, Squarespace Website Tools Pro. It's a subscription, so I don't know how it works now. When I first bought it, it was not a subscription, but now it is a yearly subscription, but you could come here and see more. Okay, five day free trial, $5 a month or $50 a year for the light, and then Pro is 160 a year. Truly, if you're designing sites and you're building a site, at least a site a month, this is more than worth it. Okay, next one is going to be, this was one that I got recommended. I haven't used this, but I imagine this is so useful. So creating lorem ipsum, which is placeholder text on your website, you have to like Google it, find a page, copy, the, copy it, paste it on your site. 
This is something that allows you the freedom and flexibility to literally just have it on your browser, decide how much you need, and then copy it immediately and paste it into your site. It really helps with the design process, especially if the client doesn't have their content ready yet. So I just thought of one more tool. This tool is called Paste, pasteapp.io. I would go towards pasteapp.io if you go back to the search results here, you'll see it says setapp.com forward slash paste. I don't recommend setapp. I've never used it, it could be great, but setapp is like a place where you pay monthly for like 50 apps or 100 apps or something, but I only want paste. So you can get paste on your Mac for like, I think it's 20 bucks a year. It's a really cheap, let's see, maybe it lists it. Yeah, maybe it's 20 bucks a year. I don't know. I would go, if you're on a Mac, I highly recommend a Mac if you're doing all this as well. But if you're on a Mac, you could go to the App Store and then purchase it from the App Store. Once you purchase it with your account, you could have it on your phone as well. Basically what it does is it keeps everything in your clipboard so you never lose anything you copy. And at the same time, you can also build in shortcuts as you go along. So you see here it highlights if it's a link versus an image versus text. If it's a color, it highlights that as well. You can have these like shortcuts. It's easy to search everything you've copied. So you never lose anything. And it, when it comes down to it, when you are a developer, you're copying colors, you're copying text, you're copying so many things. And to have to go back and forth requires a lot. So this is a way where you could have it stored. You have a little shortcut on your keyboard. And then with the shortcut, it'll pull it up on your screen and you could use it from there. So check out Paste as well. That's a really useful tool. Another tool that is not a plugin, highly recommend it, would be Coolers. Coolers is amazing to create color palettes. The reason it's so amazing is, let's go back to just the home page, and I'm gonna design just quickly a, a color palette. So let's start the generator. First and foremost, you could start, like you could explore, they have an explore tab, but I'm just gonna start with the generator. And what I'm gonna do is, let's say I really like this color here. Well, you could click the lock, and then you hit the space bar, and it starts to show you other colors that you may like. Now, it definitely matters what you're building here, but you could play with this and adjust and create whatever you like, which is so cool. And so let's say I just wanna make sure I have a full white and I have a full black. So let's say that, and then I'm gonna lock these. And then now I could lock colors as I find them and like them and then add colors to it. And it really helps me find colors very quickly and easily. So say I really like this and now I go back here and I'm like, ah, I don't really like that. Cool, and I like that. For example, this is a, there's a lot of colors here. But now I've just created a color palette. The color palette is in the URL. You could export the color palette. You could save the color palette. And it's really easy to copy. You just click right here on this little that. Boom, you could copy it. And if you need shades of the color, maybe you find out on the site it's a little bit too dark or too bright or whatever. It's really easy to play with shades and find the right color. One last tool I want to recommend is just image compression. This is one you can download for Mac. It's called Image Optim, like optimize. And you can download it, it's free, and you can use it to optimize all your images, keep the same quality, and upload them at a very small file size. Ah, quick interruption. If you're getting value from this video, please check the link down below. There is an ebook down there that you could download that is so helpful. Its focus is on design. I add new content to it constantly, and it is about the big mistakes to avoid, the things that will have people who land on your site leave immediately, and useful tips on design, on just what clear, concise, beautiful, user-friendly design looks like for your fonts, your colors, your spacing, your header, your navigation, your footer, all of those things. This is a resource I wish I had when I started website design. So check the link down below and now back to the video. So there's a lot of ways to go about this, but what I would recommend initially is while you're looking at inspiration, also consider how they lay out the content. So we're gonna talk about a few layouts that are really helpful. First and foremost, let's just look at the navigation here. Logo is in the top left. You don't have to get extra creative and go put it on the top right. That's cool, it's great, and sometimes people do it, but if you stick with a flow that people are used to, they know in the top left there's a logo and a call to action on the top right, makes it really simple. You can have the navigation in the middle. If not in the middle, I recommend over to the right. Really easy look. You could have it over to the left, but again, start with what's most common and it'll look much better. It's a very easy process to make sure that you're in control and you're delivering something that's, it might not be the most designed, but 
one of the pieces of advice that I heard recently, and you've probably heard this before, less is more. So that really simple approach. Again, here you'll see, if you go here, this is a great example as well. Business name, menu is here and then social links are over here. They're not really doing a call to action. They don't need a call to action. So that works for them. Now let's take a look at the content on these pages. So if I scroll down here, okay, immediately, as soon as I see this, this is something that design does really well. That is very important. Better one for all. Now, as I see this, this is kind of like an about. So let's say perhaps you're working with a client and they have three services. How are you gonna lay out the services? Well, one way to do it, at least initially to show the services on the homepage, for example, you may break it down into three icons like this. Visually, it's very easy to see. And visually, before I read anything, I know that these three icons with the text below them are related to this idea here. So visual layout, three icons across the page are much better than three items stacked on top of each other, unless you want to highlight more information. If you have paragraphs down here and you need to have paragraphs here, well, maybe stacking the information more like this. Let me show you more like this. So let's say these were services and you want to have more information and a clear call to action for each. Well, you could stack it in this type of format. Now let's go back to this site. The other thing that this brings me to is every section should focus on one key idea. You shouldn't have about and services all broken down on the same section. So if I scroll down here, our current releases, as soon as I see it, it's clear. It's very, very clear of what this section is. Then you go here, dedicated to the craft. This is kind of like an about the why behind the what that type of thing here. They're telling you they have a subscription. I don't even have to read this. This is my first time on the site in a long time lookbook it's very clear and then social and now they're highlighting one of their ones simple very clear very easy to use every section should have one main focus let's look here featured companies okay so let's take a look here they want to be very clear that they're a venture capital firm what they do all of that now when you take a look at the companies very beautiful there's this cool like layout spacing in between here but overall, it's very clear, very easy to use, very easy to navigate. The fade in is nice. It works really well for the site. Here is another clear point I would make. Fund strategies, three columns below it, allows you to know there's three fund strategies. I don't even have to read them or understand them to see that that's how it works. Investment approach, three. Offices, three. <laughs> FAQ, cool, that's there. And then featured news, Okay, cool. This could go on for more, but that's that. And then the office is down below, which is cool. Simple, very beautiful, well designed. They have beautiful fonts. The layout is really nice. Great work. Okay, so this is one of the call outs I would have for a blog. Okay, so let's take a look at the site. They do a really, I love this website. It's one of my favorites. Let's take a look. So when you're doing a blog or any kind of content on a page, this is something to keep in mind. It's very similar for books, not textbooks. The reason I don't like reading textbooks versus books, but one of the things you want to keep in mind is there's a word for this that I'm forgetting right now, but you want to keep between 12 to 15 words per line max. The big thing you want to stay away from is when the words go across the entire page. Number one, it's hard for people to read. Number two, it's, it's just hard to follow. And then number three, it really just doesn't look good. So you want to keep it to about 12 to 15 words per line. As you can see here, the site is there's a lot of white space on both sides, but it makes it really easy to follow. Really consider other sites that you love. So if you go to Medium, for example, and look at articles, let's take a look at one of these articles. Let's take a look here. As you can see the breakdown, same thing. They don't really allow it to go beyond a certain length. And it's not just to look cool. It actually makes it easier to read. Another thing worth pointing out is the size of the actual font. Oftentimes people make the font too small or too close together. So a bit of space between the fonts is important or sorry, between the lines is important so that it's easy to follow and read the tighter it is, the harder it is to read. And if it's way too far apart, that can also be its own challenge as well. So those are just some design tips along with a lot of design tools to use. The main thing, start with inspiration of beautiful websites. From there, design flow could be a great option for that. 
But from there, you can go through the process of figuring out other things that you like and designing sites your own way. So you can come here, there's a full search feature. You could search a bunch of different things to find different sites. And then once you build beautiful websites, you could add them to Designflow as well and they could become part of the catalog. So here are two designers that I've worked with before that I'm gonna highlight some of their advice and tips. One of them being Christy Price. She said this, say everything four times. So if you're a new designer and you're getting into the process of working with clients, say everything four times. Say it in your discovery call, say it in your proposal, say it in your contract, and then say it again when you start the project. This is a really good point to make because clients forget or they start to go on their own process of however they've worked with freelancers before, or they start to ignore the process that you initially told them. You guide the flow, you guide the process. It's so valuable to make sure that you're very clear in how you operate and how the work goes. Otherwise, scope creep could happen and also the client can just totally venture the project into a thousand revisions and a thousand emails that you don't want. They don't really want either, but it's just getting completely lost. And here's some advice I got from Adlytic Marketing. Number one, understand SEO. It's really important to understand the basics, even just the basics of SEO. We have a ton of content on the Spacebar Agency website about SEO. Start to understand the basics of how SEO works, what you need to know to get started. You don't have to become an expert. You could hire us if you're looking for an expert, but you don't have to become an expert. Just know how it works so that when you're designing a site, you're following healthy SEO practices. The next thing is be aware of automatic slugs on pages and blog posts. Squarespace will automatically generate URLs. You wanna make sure that you adjust those and control those so that they're user-friendly and that they're SEO friendly as well. What that means is you don't want it to say collection dash one, especially when it comes to things like blog posts, it will generate something like blog post copy dash one five XB two three, something weird that just doesn't make sense. You wanna control it because once you publish stuff to Google, you rarely want to change it. You rarely want to change URLs. If you have to use a 301 redirect, but if you could avoid it, do it at all costs. Make sure that the URL is what you want it to be from the beginning. Next one, this is an important one I think is really valuable and it gets a little bit difficult with clients at times, but coach them away from bad ideas. Sometimes clients want websites to do magical things that have never been done before, or they want the site to operate in just a really non-user friendly way. You are the expert. Speak to the client with confidence. Tell them, this is my recommendation. The way I've gone about it is I will be very clear about what my recommendations are. I will be very clear about what the limitations are of either the platform or scope. And then from there, I will say, you are paying me to get this done at the end of the day. And if we're not running into limitations or you don't want to go with the recommendations I give you, then I could still get it done for you. But I'm telling you, this is probably the better way. This is the better way to go. I've done this hundreds of times. I've done this many times. I know what's best for a website. Going in with that confidence helps the process so much. Sometimes clients will want you to do it their way, but depending on how you balance that, it really comes down to if you can start coaching them away from bad ideas, the earlier, the better. Next one is spend a little bit of extra on stock photos instead of just using free ones. A lot of the best free ones get used quite frequently. And so if you can go to say an Adobe stock or another stock photo website, spend 10, 15 bucks, don't spend 500 bucks on photos, spend 10 to $30 on a photo. That is a great way to make your site unique and different from other sites. And finally, finally, less is more in most cases. So keep the design simple. Don't spend too much time on any one design. One of the things that I do to not spend crazy amounts of time on a website is use, I believe it's called Parkinson's Law, where the amount of time you give something is the amount of time it takes. So when I sit down to design a page, I put on a timer, 20 minutes, 40 minutes max, I put on a timer and I get to work. I might not use the page, I might not like the page at the end, but it tells me just get content moving and keep going. With design and creativity, part of the roadblock isn't that you don't have the perfect idea yet, it's that you just need to start putting things on paper to see how it looks, adjust and change until you get what you like. In that process, I try to get to 80% in that first draft, in that first process. Get the page to 80%, get the design to 80%, get everything I want to about 80%, because often it's easy to waste so much time trying to make it 
perfect. The hardest part is when the client then comes back and says, yeah, I don't really like it. And you spent 15 hours on that one item. So the way to avoid that, less is more, get it up. They have three services, make three columns, drop it on the page, see how it looks. Over time, you may adjust, but in that process, just get up there, get your site up, and then go from there. Anyway, with that, thank you for watching. Please, again, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. If you got value from this video, I would appreciate that. It tells me a lot that you are getting value from this video. And if you have any design tips, drop them below. Drop them below in the comments, and I'd love to hear from you. With that, see you guys in the next video. Peace.